Good morning. All of us are you know, hungry, so I will not take that long to finish my presentation. And all of us in this room are trying to reduce environmental impact, whether either the reduction or recovery of nutrients or by minimizing the volatilization. So my presentation will be about the electrolysis of soil mineral effluent using three different electrodes. First, I would like to acknowledge my co-author, Dr. Saidal Bohan, and he is a research specialist in agricultural biosystem engineering, and as I am Shafi Rahman, an associate professor in the department. So why we are trying to do you know, electrolysis or trying to reduce some of these you know, environmental concern. And all of you know that you know, livestock manure, it contains the nutrients. You know, especially to the phosphorus and total nitrogen is an issue for eutrophication. So if we can reduce and recover some of these things, then we can minimize the environmental concern whenever we apply them to the field. So there are you know, many available techniques to reduce some of these pollutants. Some of them are expensive. Some of them are you know, time consuming and some of them it needs a you know, large surface area. And most of these you know, available technologies are for industrial wastewater. So basically for our agricultural wastewater or runoff, we can apply the same idea or same techniques to reduce some of these pollutants. And one of the technologies is electrocoagulation or electrolysis is you know, applying into that industrial wastewater. So we are also trying to do a lab experiment whether we can get any reasonable you know, reduction of you know, nutrients and also COD, chemical oxygen demand. So in the electrolysis process, basically use you know, electrodes and you know, apply some uh, DC power source and immerse them into the effluent. And depending on the chemistry of your water and depending on how much in a power you applied and what kind of electrodes are you using, it will dictate what kind of reduction you are expecting. And since we have limited you know, research about using the electrode in livestock wastewater, so that was the purpose whether we can use different kind of electrodes and what kind of results we are expecting. So our main objective was to compare three different electrodes. One is you know ferrous ferrous iron aluminum, aluminum, and the hybrid of these two. And the other purpose is, if we, since electrolysis depends on the how much power you are applying, so if we change the current density, so depending on that, how much reduction we can get on total phosphorus, COD, and total organic carbon. At the same time, whenever you are applying a power, how much energy is consuming. So we also measure you know, that one. So what we did, we collected the you know, swine effluent from a primary lagoon and we stored this one at you know, 4 degree Celsius until we analyzed. Then we homogenized the sample and we have done all experiment under the same condition at, at the room temperature. So these are the, some of the parameters that our effluent, and it, it has a red pH and which is very common like 7.5, 8.5 is the in a normal pH trend. Electrical conductivity is 6.7, TSS is 980, and COD is uh, 1577, which is a high in you know, a COD number. <coughs> so now in the electrolysis, basically what we did, as I mentioned, like we have you know three different you know electrodes we use. So in the electrode we use the 500 ml beaker. So out of 500 ml beaker, we use like 400 ml working volume of manure, effluent we put it. Then we use the electrode. One works as a cathode, another one works as the anode. And we also use the DC power source, and it has a capacity of 0 to 5 amp you know, current, and also the voltage 1 to 16 volt we can, you know, and we also use a magnetic stator so that it is continuously you know, disturbing those in effluent. So there is no you know, sedimentation during this and it has a good contact with those electrodes. 
and this electrode is um, size is 200 <coughs> millimeter by uh, uh, 25 millimeter and 1.5 millimeter the dimension and between the electrode we use 8 millimeter gap so that electron action is, uh, is happening within this electrode and we use three different current density 500, 1000 and 2000 milliamp per centimeter square and this electrolysis process we just uh, run it for 60 minutes and we also need to change the polarity because if we don't uh, change the polarity then you are losing electrons from one so that's why there will be more you know, eroded electrodes so that's why we need to change the polarity <coughs> for precipitation every five minutes we change the polarity manually because we don't have any automatic system that it will automatically change the polarity so we did it manually we also calculate the sample empty minutes at initial sample the five or ten minutes 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 and 60 minutes, we cal collect the sample. Then we get the sample overnight to settle, then we collected the effluent and we measured that, you know, different uh, properties, TPC or DTOC, pH and EC. Now then we calculated the removal efficiency, depending on the target component, whether it is TPC or D or whatever it is. We know the initial concentration and we know after 5 minutes, 10 minutes and you know, 40 minutes. So what is the reduction? Then in terms of electrical energy consumption, we also use this formula so that we know which electrode is giving us you know, maximum efficiency. Now in this slide you can see, this is the initial you know, swine effluent and after 16 minutes, of electrolysis at an um, current density 21 milliamp per centimeter square with aluminium electrodes and this one is aluminium ferrite electrodes. So you can clearly see that water is uh, very much clear and on the top you can also see some scum and at the bottom the sedimentation is happening, the coagulation is happening. So then as we collected the sample at different times, so you can see the different time frames. So after like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you can see a clear distinction with the initial you know, sample. So electrocoagulation is happening over there and it is separating those you know, suspended particles, whatever you have over here, and accumulating at the, as, as a sediment. So then we also collected some of this sediment, also did the ICP analysis. So what kind of element we are seeing or increase of elements in, into the sediment. And we did not collect any scum, so that was a mistake that then we know what is the you know, proportion of an element in the scum as well as in the sediment. But we measure into the effluent and into, into the sediment. So now you can see the TP reduction. Basically within you know, 30 minutes to you know, 40 minutes, we have seen a huge you know, reduction of TP. And this one is um, 10 million per centimeter square. So depending on the electrode, you know, most of the electrode mix, like after 30 minutes, it has the maximum reduction of TP. So even if we increase the time, after sometimes like 40 minutes, you see everything is flat. So maximum reduction is already happening within that time. So there is no point of increasing your, you know, uh, this um, electrolysis in a time because you are also using more energy for that one. So, irrespective of electrode, we are able to reduce the maximum, but aluminium electrode, it looks, it, uh, uh, it works better than the other electrode. But if we increase, as you can see, that reduction is happening, but it in a slow pace. But if we change this current density, you can see this reduction is happening very quickly that we can shorten the time but at the same time you are also using you know more energy so then you have to compromise like you know which way you want to go for and again as you have seen over here the aluminium then ferrous ferrous electrode you know outperform the ferrous aluminium electrodes the same thing happened over here <coughs> 
Initially, the aluminium, it was a slow response, but it was quickly catching up, and all of them, you know, within, you know, 30 minutes, it reduced the maximum amount of, you know, total phosphorus. So now, in terms of chemical oxygen demand COD, we are seeing the similar trend. So, in terms of TP, both aluminium and, you know, ferrous, aluminum combination, they did a very good job over here. But in case of COD, at low current density, we can see that, you know, ferrous and ferrous aluminum electrode is performing better than the aluminum aluminum electrode combination. And again, over here, maximum, you know, reduction we see within the 30 minutes. So as, as we, change this current density from 10 million per centimeter square to 21, again we can see the maximum reduction is happening within 30 to 40 minutes, but ferrous aluminum electrode outperform the other two electrodes. So now depending on what is our target component, whether we want to reduce the you know, TP or whether we want to reduce the COD, based on that we can choose a specific electrode that will perform better than the other one. Now, in terms of total organic carbon, we can also see that in most of the cases, like within 30 minutes, you see the maximum reduction. And after that, the reduction is happening in a, in a slower in a space. Again, over here, in this case, in a ferrous combination is you know, performing better than the other electrode at 10 m, but if we increase the current density, again the ferrous ferrous is performing better and ferrous aluminum electrode is also catching up. So, based on these three, we can say like, you know, depending on what is again, what is your target, you know, pollutant, and based on that, you can choose the right kind of electrode. Then, as I mentioned, we also use that electrical energy consumption. So these are these are the for aluminium aluminium, this is for ferrous aluminium, this one is for ferrous ferrous combination, and this one is for TP at 5 million per centimeter square current density. So if you want to increase the reduction efficiency, then you are consuming it is a directly proportional, then you are also consuming more energy. At the same time, if you are increasing your electrolysis in your time, you are also using more energy. So now you have to think about like whether you want a 100% reduction or you want a 50% or 60% is acceptable. What is the in acceptable range? So based on that one, you can induce that energy, uh, electrical energy consumption as well as the you know electrolysis time. So these two combination can be taken how much, or what is the acceptable reduction rate and how much time you want to spend for this one. The same thing with the COD. If you want to you know, reduce maximum amount of COD, then again you are, you are increasing your electrical energy consumption, also you are increasing your electrolysis time. So again you have to you know, check and balance which one is acceptable because Whenever we are doing any kind of, you know, um, reduction technology, in my opinion, there is no single treatment that you can apply and it will do your purpose whenever you are using, uh, dealing with the manure. So maybe we need to use multiple, you know, system. So this one might be one of the systems so that you can use in addition to the other system it, and ultimately you will get a, you know, better reduction. As we mentioned that we also did an ICP analysis on the slide. As you can see, also if, uh, this is the overall you know, reduction. So if you look at the TP, 5, 10 and uh, 21 million per centimeter square current density, if you look at the TP, all of them did a pretty good job at 21 million per centimeter square current density. But in case of aluminum, aluminum electrode, 
irrespective of any density, they perform much better than the other electrode. So if your target is in a DP, then you know, we should go for aluminum, aluminum electrode, it will perform much better. But if you look at this COD, ferrous aluminum electrode, the hybrid electrode, it outperform other. But if you look at the two combination TP and COD, <coughs> then ferrous aluminum electrode is working much better than the other one. So with, with one electrode, you are able to reduce you know, maximum TP and COD. So now in terms of TOC, so if you have to then ferrous electrode is performing much better than the other one. So once again, so if you want to you know, get maximum benefit and TP and COD is your you know, target, then I think we should go for you know, 21 million per centimeter square ferrous aluminum electrode, which will perform much better than the other one. And also if you look at the energy consumption, you also need to think about how much sludge. So aluminum and aluminum electrode, it is producing less sludge than the other electrode. So there is also a you know, benefit of using aluminum, aluminum electrode than the other one in terms of, because if you are using this technology, as, as I mentioned, this one is a lab scale, but if you want to apply this one in a pilot scale or full scale, then you also generate you know, less sludge, but it will also provide you the maximum benefit. Now, as, we, as I mentioned, that we also did some elemental analysis on, on the um, sludge. As you can see, like if you are using that aluminum element, then maximum aluminum you know, elements is present over there. But then you are seeing like minimum ferrous ferrous you know, element. The, Whenever you are using the ferrous aluminum electrode, then you can see that the aluminum you know, element is you know, maximizing over there. The same thing with ferrous. So whenever you are using a specific electrode, and then you can see that elemental composition is you know, increasing you know, significantly into that one. At the same time, you can also see the phosphorus element is also you know, much higher over here. So we have not done any ACM or any other analysis to see so that reduction, whether it is a aluminum sulfate or ferrous um, like um, uh, phosphate. So we have not done any ACM or any other analysis. So we just did a elemental analysis on this one. So we don't know the real cause of reduction. So maybe it is aluminum phosphate or ferrous phosphate is happening because of that the reduction is occurring. So overall, you know, it, in terms of TP, chemical oxygen demand, and total organic carbon, all of these elements, so the all three electrodes were able to reduce this, you know, significantly. And as the current density increases and electrolysis time increases, the reduction is also, you know, increased. Aluminium aluminum electrolyte, it consumes the lowest energy compared to the other one, and it also maximize the TP reduction. In terms of you know, energy consumption and you know, sludge produced is directly proportional to the current densities and applied to those electrode. So now in terms of CD, COD, for similar electrical energy consumption, ferrous aluminum electrode outperform the other two electrodes. So if you want to maximize the COD reduction, that ferrous aluminum electrode combination, the COD and TP was the maximized. But in terms of TOC reduction for the similar electrical energy consumption, ferrous ferrous electrode outperformed the other electrodes. So electrolysis process, you know, deposited significant amount of element in the sludge, so it's likely to improve the water quality. So now this project was funded by not Ecura Power Council and State Board of Agriculture Research and Education. With that, if there is any question, then I'll be happy to answer. Question. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to know how what you're doing differs from uh, electrocoagulation, where you use sacrificial electrodes to supply the iron or aluminum. How that is any more beneficial than if I supply liquid ferrochloride or an alum and mix it together and form a precipitate? What, what 
You have the sacrificial electrodes that are essentially supplying the iron aluminum filament. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, how does that differ? Why do you have to do this? Why don't you just mix a, mix a little bit of solution of ferric or alum to it and precipitate it that way? What's the benefit? I think this one you can do for a short period of time because if you are mixing that one way, then you have to use a you know large amount of you know alum or to get a significant reduction. But if you just do this one in a short period of time, then it will be more effective than because you have to use a large volume to reduce some of this one, you know. In a, in a, uh, in a uh, like if you want to mix daily and alum or some other elements. So that might be a difference. Any other questions? All right, let's give them a hand. Thank you.